do you turn nothing into something beautiful? <laughs> Who wrote these? <laughs> well, <I did. laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> no, uh, I mean, it depends on what you consider nothing, because I think anybody that uses art to make a living will tell you that they don't ever see nothing whenever, you know, you've got something in there that you're wanting to build, but like, I'll go through my scrap pile sometimes and I'll see a shape in there and I'm like, hey, I can tool that. <laughs> and uh, I'll add a lot of time and my effort to it. And uh, I don't know if all of it turns out to be art, but it's trying. I think, you know, it's in the eye of the beholder. You gotta be able to see it before you can make it. We did a saddle for one of my buddies that helped me in here for a while, and I hid stuff in the carving on it. And uh, like six months down the road, he'd send me a picture and be like, did you put this in here on purpose? I'm like, yep, <laughs> you found it. But uh, he, he always gives me heck, he calls it Easter egg. And to me, like the freest form of expression is it's a permanent deal now. You know, somebody's wearing that. It's just being able to cut it in that leather and know that somebody's gonna use and or wear it, you know, just pretty cool. My name's Peyton Ferris. We're in Ovalo, Texas, and I make custom saddles and other leather goods. Um, what was the question? What is art? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I lost it. <laughs> art is something that you see that makes you feel. And I think it doesn't matter if you're looking at a pencil sketch or a marble sculpture, you can tell what art is. And sometimes it wasn't meant to be art, but it turned into it. You know, there's a lot of stuff out there that you look at it and you're like, man, and that guy might have been like, I was gonna weld some stuff together and I just got into it, you know? You don't know what it's gonna make them feel. Cause like you can look at 15 different people's reviews on a famous piece of art and they might all come out in the same general cloud, but none of them say the same thing. And that's why I say it's something you see that makes you feel, because it doesn't say how you're going to feel about it, but it's going to make you feel something. Whether it's like the people that wrote, you know, music or painted something, drew something, carved something, they needed to do something with their hands somewhere in there. You've got this itch. Some people have that desire and some people don't. I think that's what makes you an artist, whether you use it to make a living or you just do it in your hobby time, it's there. A saddle to me is a tool that you can express yourself on that's gonna get years and years and years of use. And uh, you're getting to, if it's well taken care of, you're getting to put your expression of art into permanency. I want to see it 10 years down the road with horse sweat and leather balm in it where it's got that deep red brown and I mean I love a good rough out saddle. I think there's more art in getting one in in two years for a clean and oil. You see everything that happened to that saddle. Western Heritage Classic happened right up the road every year, and uh, I can remember probably as far back as like, you know, first or second grade going up there with my parents and walking through the Bit and Spur show. And I can remember my dad being, you know, like, that wasn't factory made, like, he made that. That man sitting behind that made that, you know? And you're like, whoa, like, he really, you know, he's got that down. I've always been fascinated with any kind of, you know, cowboy working equipment that goes into, you know, between you and your horse. And one of my roommates bought some leather one day, and he's like, man, we're gonna build these leggings. And uh, his girlfriend was pretty punchy, and he's like, we're gonna build Chelsea some leggings. And I was like, all right, you know. We all laid these hides out on the kitchen table, <laughs> cut them out and made them. And uh, we thought they were pretty cool, so I turned around and made myself a set. And uh, he helped me a bunch just learning you know what to measure here which way you know which way you want this to move and i remember telling him i was like man you know i really i want to build a saddle i was like that would be the ultimate two years later my son was born and i was spending a lot more time at home and i 
one of my friends that I went to class with was a, he carved. He'd been carving since he was like 13 years old. And I watched him doodle on his pads. As long as I can remember, I've been doodling stuff. And I was like, man, he's making flowers down there. You know, you're in kind of an auditorium thing. So I asked Ricky, I was like, Ricky, what are you drawing down there? He said, I was working on a belt pattern. And you know, just like it was everyday life. And I thought, man, I can do that. And uh, we started working together on and off at his place at night. About a year after that, I had a tree break in my saddle and I couldn't afford to replace what I had. And I knew Ricky had built saddles and I said, Ricky, what, what would it take to build some saddles? He's like, oh man, it's nothing. I got these videos you can watch on your time. And he's like, we'll get together and look at some of the finer points. And he sent me home with those videos and I watched them. And I found an old tree. One of our friends has a panhandle leather in Amarillo. And he had a box of trees that somebody had traded him on a leather bill. And he's like, you can look through them. Found one I liked and checked it out and it fit my pony good. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, started building a saddle then, and I guess I hadn't really looked back since then. We uh, built a lot of other things, but I feel like making saddles is, that's what I, it's what I meant to do. production saddle shop, they get their leather on pallets. They get their trees by the load. They get, you know, they're not talking to a guy about one saddle, they're talking about this batch. And I feel like you lose all the selection process and a whole lot of the care and assembly whenever it becomes a job to somebody instead of a, like for us, this is what we do. Nothing's gonna get, you know, covered up, thrown together and assembled if it's not how we like it. And that's the biggest difference to me. I enjoy making them to the point where I want to make every saddle. Like we're fixing to do a side saddle. And I've talked to a lot of makers that are like, man, I wouldn't want to build that. You know, that's not my style. And that's not the part that I'm about. More, I want to build your saddle. I want to build it for that person. My, my style is I'm not gonna pick the only kind of saddle I'm gonna build. I'm gonna pick the people that are wanting to come in and this is what I like, this is what I do, this is my life, this is my set. I had a guy coming out and kind of learning from us and helping me a little bit on wallets and stuff. And we're really, you know, he's starting to get into building and he wants to learn how to make a saddle. And I had these trees and I had a few set aside that like I knew they were still straight and square. And I said, you can have one of these trees. You know, it's straight, it's cheap to learn on. You'll know whether you want to build saddles or not when you get done with it. And Tack kind of looked at me after Ben left that day and he said, can I have one of those trees? He's seen the process from bare wood all the way through now. His saddle, <laughs> whenever we built it, I'll tell you all this because we're on camera and everybody needs to know this, but uh, we made we made three different seats for that saddle and the third one is in it. I was like, now that leather in there, I was like, that's probably, you know, close to $200 worth of leather that we just went through. And I said, but we didn't just slap one on there, did we? And he was like, no. And I was like, why do you think we didn't slap one on there? He's like, because it's mine. And I was like, no, <laughs> no, we didn't slap one on there because we make a better product than that. You do what it takes to make it happen right. Whether you're making money on it or losing money on it, the product that leaves here is your legacy. Somebody's gonna see that down the road and you gotta know that. And to me, that's a big part of parenting is <laughs> getting all the good parts of you across without letting the bad parts of you get in the way, you know? Because <laughs> like you get a little bit of everything from 
yourself and you know the other parent and that's just everybody has to learn learn to be themselves you know and uh, how to come into themselves and I hope that more than anything that I instill a sense of commitment with tax so that he has the stick to it to get through whatever he wants to do in life. I hope that that's the way I'm seen looking back when I'm gone or whatever is that I lived a life of, you know, passion and commitment in that order, you know, to God, family, and friends. I would love to, in 10 years, I would love to have trained somebody to work with me to kind of, you know, whether it's my son or not, I would like to train somebody to carry it on in the ideas that we have for building saddles. I've been working since I was 12 years old and I hadn't had a real job yet. <laughs> I'd say chase it. I mean, if you want it bad enough, you'll figure out a way to pay the bills at the end of the day. I uh, worked a ranch job whenever I was in college during the daytime and I did leather work at night and on the weekends. And I think the biggest thing is not being afraid of your internal goals because somewhere in you there's something that's itching you and telling you why you're chasing that. And for me, it's I want to be the best saddle maker all around that there's ever been. And I may never get there, I may die trying, but that's what we're going to do every day until then. And if you're just starting out and you're scared to go out there and chase it whenever you've still got a eight to five job, you know, for the main part of your living, it's really hard to adapt at any given point, but it doesn't do anything but get harder. If you bite the bullet early and you learn how to live skinny, you know, everything looks good after that. I would like for Ferris Custom Saddles to be something, you know, somebody knows that diamond whenever they see it stamped in leather, they know what it says before they read it. I would hope that people come to use our saddles and use us enough that we become a household name in leather. My name is Peyton Ferris and I am a maker.